recording. Yes. Hello. Hi. So this uh, this is uh, this is a little uh, uh, follow up video for the uh, autumn roundup. Not quite the same day, but well, it's it's still the same month, so it still counts. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, as, as I understand, uh, Nux, you and Claire went to a convention in Belgium, right? We did! We so you did! We ventured to FACT convention in Belgium, uh, and we had a good time. And you also uh, observed with wide eyes and noticed all sorts of... Uh, useful shit that we could discuss and and you even wrote some down and stuff we, that we can use for the future we weren't there to enjoy ourselves we were there for research mm. that's, that's my justification <laughs> <laughs> um, should I just get straight into this? yeah ok so we wandered around facts it was great um, but the thing that stood out to me the most, it was huge the convention was absolutely mm -hmm. massive it took place in a huge hall, there were so many people um, the thing that stood out to me the most and that I didn't realise until I saw it is that you don't have to be you don't have to solo buy a stand, right? Mm -hmm. so I walked around and there was a, there was a single stand and you get, uh, I want to say about 10, maybe 15 feet per stand, right? you get a fair amount uh, on a big stall, and behind this one table was six authors, all with like their stack of books in front of them, all selling stuff. And I imagine what they've done is they've all come together, six separate authors, mm -hmm. and have uh, and have uh, basically reduced the cost for one another, basically by you know renting one between six. And the other thing that I noticed that they had was like a catalogue. And they, I think they were all indie authors, but they mm -hmm. were in together on this catalogue that, that showed all of their work together, basically. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like an indie author publishing house, the way they had it all get organised, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking maybe if there's a convention in the UK or something, we can apply this knowledge, and me and Carl, and if anyone's visiting from Europe, we can all sort of pitch in and, yeah, you know, instead of... Cause uh, doing some background research, a large stall at Comic Con is like two grand. Mm -hmm. so if, you're, if you're selling t-shirts, for example, you spend two grand. But if you split two grand between even four people, that's only five hundred each. But the the thing with conventions is all the foot traffic that's going past you. There's so many people always dipping into all these stalls and everything. Mm -hmm. it's just like, uh, that's that's what you're really paying for, I think. Mm -hmm. So. That was one thing I noticed. That was that was the thing, and I think I probably should have realised it before going. That hey, you don't have to solo buy a <laughs> stall. You probably could go in with people, but it wasn't until I saw it that it was like, oh yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So that's like uh, lesson one: team up with other people, pool the resources, mm -hmm. share the convention space. Yeah, and looking at the next point that, that says stores with different types of products attracted more attention. Books alone were not very popular, but books and related clothing or artwork and stuff like that was. It's also possible that we could we could go in with somebody who isn't selling books, who is selling mm -hmm. like another product, for example, and, and use, and uh, not use, but <laughs> <laughs> benefit from that a little bit, in that yeah. they will be bringing people into our store not necessarily selling books, but maybe they're selling like figurines or, or furniture or something like that. Because there was a lot of that there as well. There were people selling like swords that they've made mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, and that was really cool. So yeah, um, I, I'm I'm highlighting some of these points here in your in your notes. Uh, yeah, this yeah. actually uh, reminds me of this year's Estcon, and of course Estcon is a much smaller it's much more personal to begin with you have like uh, you have the local publishing houses uh, selling their books uh, uh, people bringing in their used books uh, but uh, what I noticed this year was that uh, there were all sorts of uh, other nerd goodies on offer as well like somebody had made uh, like anime style 
bookmarks, somebody was, uh, I think, had just prints or drawings, I had some pendants which I traded for beer. <laughs> nice. uh, I think uh, other people had also uh, all sorts of jewelry stuff and maybe dice bags. And, uh, I, I don't remember if the, if the board games were for sale or just uh, for playing on site, but, but basically similar things, uh, si similar idea works on uh, on many scales, I could say. So it's like where, where nerds come together, some nerds are book nerds, some nerds are game nerds, and if, if your stall has something that attracts both of them, or attracts uh, the, the crowd that overlaps in interests, then that's like more traffic for everybody, I guess. <laughs> So there were some stalls that were selling like figurines, but a lot of people were actually going to those stalls for the uh, playing cards. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they were meant. Uh, this was the other thing I noticed. Uh, when you buy things at a convention, you have to carry them around with you at the convention for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed that people tended to buy sort of like smaller items mm -hmm. as opposed to like the, the big things. But there were people walking around with the stalls that they bought, um, mm -hmm. which I thought. <laughs> uh, talking about the stalls here real quick uh, a lot of the stalls took, made use of their full available floor plan, mm -hmm. floor plan. So you'd, you'd have like the 15 feet but it would all be table and, and racks and mm -hmm. like the racks would be covered in shirts and what have you and the, the store owner would stand off to one side mm. so they made use of their entire Ah, okay, so so that the visitors could uh, walk on both sides of the table, you mean? Uh, uh, okay, so you've got you've got the aisle here mm -hmm. that everybody's walking up and down, mm -hmm. and then say on this side, uh, instead of having a stall that you can sort of like walk in and around, mm -hmm. you stay in the main walking aisle. It's just the table mm -hmm. and it's surrounded by racks, and it's the whole thing. And the person who's running this stall sort of just stands off to one side. They they haven't got any area to stand in. Um, mm. Basically, all their stock is up. But one of the one of the things that I preferred, I didn't really like that so much because you still you're still in the walkway. The stalls that I preferred were the ones that had like a, you've got the walkway here, and then there's a screen, right? And the screen usually has some fucking amazing artwork on it that's relevant to the stall. And you can come off the main walkway behind this screen, and there'll be a table in the middle of this stall, and you can, well, you can walk around that one and, and really have a look around. And I preferred those ones because they had a more personal feel, they were more private, you're not in the hustle and bustle of it all, you can still, you're still looking at products, you can stand still and examine what, what you're buying, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so I preferred those ones that are like, you could come off the main walkway and walk around, but for space efficiency, I can see why those other ones would be mm -hmm. better. Okay. And then you've got a typical sort of book sale flea market stalls where people have just got a table and they mm -hmm. the vendor stands behind the table mm -hmm. and then the people come up to it. So that's kind of like the standard one that you're going to find there. Um, oh, and the other one, some shops, and I'm going to call these ones shops, they are mm -hmm. stores, but they were, they were like little convenience shops that had been set up and they were usually on corners and you'd come in and it would be like just an aisle in a shop. Mm -hmm. You'd buy the stuff you want, and then you'd come back out again, and the till would be at the entrance that you mm -hmm. came in. They only really work on like corners. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was pretty interesting. Um, so basically, there's more than one way to set out set up the goods and to set up the booth thing mm -hmm. table. Yeah, and I think that's an important thing to take note of because uh, I <laughs> I don't really like to hustle and bustle. Like a lot of people really drive mm. me, especially in a convention <laughs> setting. If I if I'm if say for example I'm walking, say I want to go to the bathroom or whatever, I've got a very clear goal of where I want to go, and there's a lot of people milling about. Obviously, those people are there to mill about. They are not they're not in a hurry. They're not mm -hmm. to go anywhere. They're just enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas me. I'm like, oh, I need to go to, I need to go to this location. Why are all these people just? Can't I get past them? So I found it 
Training. So these stalls where you could go up to the side behind the screen and just sort of gather some of your thoughts and relax and look at some mm -hmm. of the stuff they said was, was really sort of like re energizing. Like mm -hmm. Ah, uh, sort of like little hideaways or little retreats from all the bustle. Yeah, definitely. I uh, I prefer those stalls. Um, hmm. They did take you out of the walking a little bit, but like they 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 slow you down basically. You go into mm -hmm. these these side ones, and and but everything else is still going on around you and you sort of lose yourself in the stalls that you're in and you spend longer in them basically because your brain's sort of trying to make sense mm -hmm. of everything and that. So that possibly could work to our advantage. Yeah. Um moving on. Yes. One thing that I found absolutely amazing was that okay, so you've got the main convention hall and then there were four or six I think it was maybe six massive rooms off to each side mm -hmm. and one of the massive rooms was sort of like a sci-fi uh, games area and I turned the corner and the first stall that I saw in the sort of sci-fi games area was the R2-D2 Builders Club. Now I don't know <laughs> if you're familiar with the R2-D2 Builders Club but it is, it's amazing. All these people online are doing like replica robots from the Star Wars universe including mm -hmm. BB-8 as well and BB-8 was there, it was really cool. Um, but you turn the corner and there's just this army of R2-D2s in different colours. <laughs> like, there's like a sick one and all this and that. Um, and if you kept going on, behind that area, there, were, there was tables set up for people to play Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon. No Magic the Gathering, I noticed, mm -hmm. which was sad face. Um, uh, and there were people running live Dungeons and Dragons uh, sessions. So there were game masters waiting Mm -hmm. people to just sit down and start playing a Dungeons and Dragons game, which I thought was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the one thing I noticed was that the these side areas didn't attract as many people. So you could walk oh. around the big the big hall but, uh, for hours and run into like thousands of people. As soon as you went off to the side and went into one of these, I say smaller rooms, but they were still huge. Mm -hmm. like, the crowds were were hugely diminished to a non and, that, and the crowds only came back to those places when there was like an event, like a cosplay mm -hmm. event or a or a R two D two parade or something like that mm -hmm. going on. So that was one thing I noticed. So if we if we were to go to a convention and it had like a separate sci fi area, I wouldn't recommend that we go into the sci fi area. I would recommend that we get somewhere in the main hall on the main walkway where people are walking around. Of course, uh when I'm listening to this, I'm thinking this can work both ways. So, on one hand, you want to not set up in a specialized area because it doesn't get as much traffic. But on the other hand, if you are set up in a, in a specialized area, yes, it gets, it's get le it gets less traffic, but you will stand out more there. So it's like the traffic that goes there has more time and, and more attention to offer, maybe. So this mm -hmm. is actually a trade-off to, uh, th like, depending on the goal and depending on your stand and depending on your materials and depending on maybe your activities, uh, this can actually vary, I, I, would, I would think. I mean, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't... I wouldn't I wouldn't team up with the uh, with like a robot builders club but if there was like a role play area uh, I would actually consider maybe teaming up with or or like <laughs> sneaking up uh, under their their uh, umbrella and like yo we're kind of sort of maybe <laughs> like you eh, can we hang yeah. out here <laughs> So I I can see I can see how this can work as both advantage and disadvantage. I also think you slightly neared a point there that also the people coming into the sci-fi area are exactly our target crowd, whereas mm -hmm. the people in the main halls tend to be more into like anime and yeah and all yeah and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I think yeah. 
there's some things we can learn from there. I'm glad we're having this discussion. Mm -hmm. I might make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like, uh, sure, more eyeballs is better because like on average more eyeballs uh, could mean that more people who might be interested in in our stuff notice it but on the other hand specialization can help to stand out so so there is also that <laughs> uh, also I'm, I'm thinking in terms of competing for attention so like uh, uh, let's say there's a main hall that's super crowded and if you're not one of the main attractions you might uh, uh, you might get overshadowed by big bigger and shinier stalls but if you're if you're in a more quieter area then you suddenly become the uh, bigger attraction there that's 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 my sneaky thinking right there also, uh, being that it's in a quieter area, a lot of the stalls on the main floor had like at least two or three people running them. Mm. In the quieter specialist areas, there was a lot of one person. Mm. Yeah, so they were able to have more one to one time with, with customers. And mm -hmm. Yeah, quality, quality time, see? Yeah, yeah, see? Um, okay, Ca do carry on. This is another point I've made, but now that I'm reading it back, it's like... This, this is true to a point, okay? The mm -hmm. people were selling everything regardless of what zone they were in. Um, essentially, you didn't have to be in the sci-fi section if you were a sci-fi mm -hmm. stall. Uh, but that, that's not really... 100% accurate. There were stalls in the sci-fi area, so you had the R2-D2 Builders Club, you had like the Star Wars cosplay, you had the uh, sci-fi prop makers, which were awesome, there's a lot of guns and stuff that they're uh, mm -hmm. very science fiction looked to them, they were awesome, could have spent hours at that stall. Um, but in off to the corners of these places, there were people selling like key, I bought a keychain that was for you you paid like one, two, three, four, five euros, depending on what keychain you bought, and that money was going to, uh, I think it was like a cancer charity or something. Mm -hmm. So, not really anything to do with sci fi, but I think it was just like possibly. Uh, it was just it was just a stall hanging out in the sci-fi mm -hmm. area, so yeah. you, you don't necessarily need to sell sci-fi stuff, but it, it does look a bit out of place if you're in the sci-fi area and you're just sending like random stuff. Mm -hmm. so, um, that was that point, and also one thing I noticed, and I I I don't know, I still can't wrap my head around this, but second-hand video game shops. Like, PlayStation 1 games, Mega Drive games, Dreamcast, all that sort of stuff, drew in massive crowds. Like, any time yeah. we approached a video game shop selling stuff from, like, the last couple of decades, mm -hmm. we couldn't get to the damn thing because of the crowd surrounding it. Like, <laughs> we couldn't get to the desk because there were so many people <laughs> there. And I can't really wrap my head around why that would be the case. I'm not... Some oh, really could could be collector's items. Possibly, but when we did get to the desk, it's sort of like Sonic One for the Mega Drive, mm. those kind of games, right? And uh, possibly like Alex the Kid, you know, it's common games, like really, really common games. Um, yeah, but oh, they they really used to be they used to be common, but can you just buy them on a st uh, in a in a store now? I'd say that if you went to a boot sale in the UK or even that boot sale that pops up in in uh, Harlem uh, in uh, NDSM Wolf every now and then, you could walk around there and pick up like four or five copies of Sonic One. Easy, I think. Yeah, but so. you're we're talking about cartridges, right? The stuff yeah. that they don't make anymore. Mm. So it's so it's still uh, I I, I yeah, guess I I guess it might be the vintage appeal and it might be collector's stuff maybe and it could be that yes there are all those common games but maybe uh, the people are actually after the more rare stuff but uh, to get to the rare stuff they are also looking for all the common stuff 
Uh, that that, that might be it. I don't know. I, I know nothing of that, of course. So now that you've mentioned that, actually, that would make a lot of sense because if you're the reason there are a lot of people at these stores is because the people at the table are flicking through the directory mm -hmm. to find the mm -hmm. they want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and thus taking up a lot of time. Mm. Okay, okay, there might be some logic to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, Magic the Gathering is not as popular as I thought it would be. Um, oh, there are there are a lot of people selling Pokemon singles and possibly Yu-Gi-Oh singles. I want to say Pokemon's really damn popular, man. And uh, Dragon Ball Z cards are now available as well. Mm. Um, and there were some shops selling like the Magic the Gathering booster boxes, um, but a lot of it was Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon and that sort. Mm. Of. You couldn't really buy Magic the Gathering singles either, which I thought was wow. Um, but the one thing I did notice is that at the convention, you can get stuff for like, so say you bought a, and I think this is, if I go down here, you can get a Battle for Zen booster box mm -hmm. for like ni 90 euros at a convention, whereas if you're talking about getting off like card market or somewhere like that, you're looking for, no you're looking at 99 euros, mm -hmm. and that's not included in posters and packages, so I thought that was kind of good, and Stuff on card market generally tends to be pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. so, not sponsored, but card market. If you want to sponsor me, <laughs> uh, I think um. I, fi I think I think it might be that the uh, the magic is hospital, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they, they are so big that I guess it's for them it's easier just to operate from their lair and not mm -hmm. go to conventions or, or like if you go, uh, the ones who go to conventions are, uh, I think, uh, might be more the uh, collectors and the second-hand uh, sellers. Mm -hmm. But Hasbro themselves will just operate from their volcanic lair and uh, mm -hmm. and ship all over the world as they please. <laughs> so the way I understand it is they've got a very specific uh, distribution network. Mm. Or they only allow certain level stores to distribute their mm. goods. Okay. Like yeah, years. yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, just to quick yeah, uh, that, that, that was the Zen box that I bought at the convention. convention. I managed to pull hundreds of Eldrazi out of it for my, uh, for my <laughs> commander, <laughs> anyway, which, was, which saved me uh, a lot of money. And, and the, the other thing. thing was that I pulled a load of like Gideon Ally of Zendikar. That's like a seven, eight euro card. So I was able to pay for the box basically from selling the stuff that I pulled from it and using the stuff that I wanted. So that was really cool. Um, but that's completely off topic. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point here, cosplay seems really popular. I don't think that really needed to be said. There was more people in costume than not. It's weird when you go to a convention Oh, mm -hmm. it's weird when you go anywhere and you're in a normal clothes and you're the one who looks mm -hmm. out of place, right? That's how I like uh, the lesson I'm taking from this is that, let's say, hy hypothetically, hypothetically, let's say we go to a random convention somewhere, either on the continent or in the UK, and uh, I think as, a, as an author, teaming up with other authors, uh, the, the focus would not be on proper cosplay, but what guys like us could do is to make make sure that uh, we at least have some stylized elements, like, mm. I don't know, like if somebody uh, writes steampunk, then they at least put some goggles on. <laughs> You know that 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 sort of thing, so that so that you 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 don't necessarily have to uh, might not be in costume, but you would keep but you would style with the uh, with your uh, topic and your themes in mind. That's 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 my takeaway from here. That's pretty cool. So uh, I think I might be being too specific with it, but like if we were there, mm -hmm. maybe. Maybe one of us would be wearing like a leather jacket, like a super style leather jacket. Yeah, 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 like, uh, 
Yeah, like I would try to put together an ensemble that uh, that includes uh, some uh, well area appropriate clothing, <laughs> which we which we currently do not have. But like you know that sort of stuff. But also topical teas are always a thing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed wearing my calabasa. Thank you, Claire, for the calabasa. Can you, can you, do you, do you have it somewhere nearby so you can show it? In the washing basket. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> and the probably next video that we do. Be yeah, a, I'm gonna, um, I'm, g- I'm gonna move my camera a little bit. So it's essentially, it is Woo-hoo! that poster. T-shirt. Yeah, that Claire poster on a T-shirt. So massive thank you to Claire for printing those out. Um, she wore one, I wore one. We look like quite a nerdy couple. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I should really put Cal Bar the poster here, shouldn't I? Yeah, that would uh, that would be a nice addition. Mm. <laughs> um, Okay, cosplay thing properly, yeah. Uh, start on smaller stalls, try to make the time to engage with you. I remember walking past one stall, I bought a. Um, oh, I can't remember what I bought. <laughs> um, I think it was the fat pack for mm. uh, something. Um, and uh, the guy on the stall literally was in a conversation with one customer, mm-hmm. looked over to me, was like, what are you buying? <laughs> I was like, that please. He took it out, took my money, changed me up, and then went back to the conversation he was having with another customer. Mm. He was round and running round. Super he efficient. Was, he was, yeah, super efficient, but swept off his feet. Whereas on the smaller stalls, we went up to one that was selling art, mm-hmm. and the guy, we were able to have a proper conversation with the guy, and, you know, uh, he, he, we were the only two customers there for like five we had like a really good conversation with him, we gave him the business cards and was like, hey, we bought some of your art, how about you check out some of our sci-fi, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got to talk to him, he's in North London. So no, this, uh, really I'm, I'm, I'm actually gleaning one good point from here, I'm gonna mm. type it here. Oh, I haven't seen that little annotation, Bray. What? I haven't seen LL popping up. <laughs> yeah. oh, Learning point is your if your <laughs> if you're a small beans like us make use of that quality time and spend some time with fellow indies so basically if they have time to chat with you then let's chat (laughs) and and who knows who what sort of uh, uh, common interests and uh, and common projects might grow out of this. Okay, right. do do come on. Oh, oh, just uh, going on that point uh, slightly. I remember the stalls that I stood and talked to people mm-hmm. and they engaged with me. I don't yep. remember the stalls that yep. didn't engage with me. So yep. you know, yeah, yeah. So. This, uh, yeah. So it's like in the bigger business you're going there to buy the thing, but in the smaller business you literally go there to uh, share some time together. Mm. Even even if you do buy some things, but I, I, I it sounds like it's a win-win if you spend some time there and uh, they can uh, they can talk about their stuff and you can talk about your stuff and so on. I, I just remember having a really good time chatting with the guy who did the art prints. Uh, I think there was also an element of, oh, you're from London. That's <laughs> 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 remember in Europe, that basically makes us neighbours. Mm. Um, okay, so we've done the prices thing. Um, this 
was something that I stumbled on after the fact. So vouchers and stuff and mm -hmm. leaflets drawing people to your store. Um, one of the things that, that I, I didn't really pay too much attention to this, but one of the Star Wars stores was doing like a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. And that scavenger hunt sent you to basically other stores mm. for the convention and you had to find something at that store which essentially meant you were spending start time at that business like doing a scavenger hunt but also you're at that business now you're sort of there and you're looking at the stuff they're selling i thought that was kind of interesting so even if you have a quote-unquote smaller shop off the side in one of these sci-fi areas mm -hmm. if somebody is wandering the main floor handing out leaflets that maybe give someone give give people a reason to go to your stall and actually seek it out. Mm -hmm. That might we might still get the benefit of having the like, the foot traffic <laughs> and still only attracting the people who would be keen and interested mm -hmm. in that sort of thing. Um, so and I think uh, also if when we put our own stall together, I think a catalogue is also a very good idea. Like those authors, those other authors had is the catalogue of all their books. And my final point on this, we can come back to some of these and explore further. My final point is, barely any of the people working stalls were sitting down. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a chair for, like, none of them packed chairs in with mm -hmm. their stalls. It was all merchandise and tables and posters and stuff like that. No, nobody was sitting down. They couldn't. They didn't have any time mm. to sit down. Mm -hmm. so, it's a, so basically, it's an active thing, mm -hmm. plan for put comfy shoes, <laughs> comfy yeah. boots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a field day. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it takes place across two days, I can imagine that to be very, very draining. Mm -hmm. So that's possibly something I'd, I'd need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's another thing that I picked up from the uh, from the logistical side, and I think I have read it uh, in another indie author's blog as well. Uh, I think she went to a book fair, and and her lesson was have uh, have bags, any bags that you can uh, that you can give with your stuff and that makes it more likely that people will buy the books mm. uh, so I'm putting uh, several points together now and I'm thinking like if you team up with a bunch of authors rent a, uh, a table together then uh, you can also uh, have this little racket going on that uh, uh, that you either uh, sell tote bags or give some some bags out with a purchase but you can also help out those others in your store so for example if somebody wants to sell like free books then uh, they then the uh, guest can get a bag uh, cheaper from you or something like that so basically making it more likely than uh, more likely that uh, that people ha will have something to carry their stuff in and then they can physically <laughs> take those books with them. An interesting point, actually, is the difference between the business convention I went to many, many, many moons ago now mm -hmm. and, the, and the fax convention that I went to. At the business convention, they were throwing tote bags at you. Mm -hmm. I've probably still got bags from that convention knocking around. Mm -hmm. Alibaba, all those sorts of companies. And they fill them up with leaflets and catalogs yeah. and that sort of thing, and they just thrust them upon you for free. There's right, and at the end of that convention, I was weighed <laughs> down with these, these bags. So many of them, like you, end up putting bags in other bags. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very very common item in the uh, business gifts uh, mm. line lineup. But the other the other thing with that is though, you when you're walking around, you. You recognise an Alibaba bag. Mm -hmm. It's a bright fucking orange thing. Mm -hmm. It's got the Alibaba logo on it, massive, and Alibaba.com underneath it, or whatever their website is, on the bottom. Mm -hmm. it's, it's advertising. It's massive advertising. Yeah, yeah. So, 
that is also potentially. But I like the, the difference actually. I didn't realise it until you mentioned it. But the difference between the business convention, where they're literally throwing stuff at you for mm-hmm. free, and the and the fax convention, where it's a lot more reserved. I mean, mm-hmm. you can take you can take leaflets and little catalogues, but no one was really giving stuff away in bags unless you purchased something. You didn't have to purchase anything at the business convention. They were just like, take it. <laughs> well, yeah, for for them it was already like th- those were the handouts. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but big bright like. Mm. <laughs> 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 it kind of you Would work quite well. I don't think I've got anything else, but mm. if, if we stumble upon anything in the future, this is a topic I would like to revisit. Mm. Uh, is there anything else you remember from the convention, like personal experience-wise? Not, I mean, not as a sort of businessy look, but just as a guest. When me and Claire were on our last, uh, the, the one of the earlier Super Bowl tours, we drove to the Czech Republic and we had to mm-hmm. we had to drive past Dresden. We stopped in Dresden, and I picked up a cup of tea from the side of the road garage, and I drank it, and it was the worst cup of tea <laughs> I've ever, ever drunk in my life. <laughs> I, I went to sex convention, I ordered a cup of tea, drank it, and that tea from Dresden has now been outclassed. Oh. I drank the worst cup of tea in my entire life. <laughs> and that was that was a personal thing that stood out for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Such a long-winded story to get there, but yeah. Um, I no, not really. I just remember mm. that the people who took time to speak to us, I was more likely to buy something off. If mm. I was seeking out a product, um, like there were Amon Cat booster boxes and Battle for Zendikar boxes. Mm. I'm a huge fan of the Eldrazi. I went for the Battle, Battle for Zendikar box. If I knew what I was looking for and I was seeking stuff out, I generally tend to find a shop or a stall that was selling it, mm-hmm. make a price down, and then later in the day, if I hadn't found it cheaper in any of the other stalls, I'd come back. Um, and the guys running the comic, sh- the, the card shop at the end of one of the aisles, they had like four or five people on, and they could two to a customer, essentially, and they were in such an up mood, they were really happy to speak to people. I was like, have you got a business card? And one of them was like, no, but check this out. And he got his mate to turn around and his mate was like, oh yeah, just take a photograph. And I was like, yeah, do a sexy pose and that. <laughs> and we had a really good laugh with each other. We a really good laugh. That's right. Like, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, actually. Even if you don't have handouts, but you do have some... Uh, topical tea or some art printed out, you can just hold it up and have people take photo. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I thought that was a really quick way of doing it, a really clever way. And uh, it sort of built more interaction as well, which is really good. Mm-hmm. I was more inclined to sort of work yeah, with yeah. them. Uh, great. Um, and Claire had a great time as well. So she, uh, we, I, st- I laid eyes. I didn't actually speak to him, but I laid eyes on the guy who plays Doc in Back to the Future. Oh! Um, <laughs> yep. That was, that was kind of a, oh! It's oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, There you go. <laughs> oh, Claire drew a picture mm-hmm. of the guy who plays, I want to say Neville Longbottom, I apologise if I get that wrong, I'm not too up on the Harry Potter thing. Uh, she drew a picture of the guy who plays Neville Longbottom mm-hmm. and took it took it to him to get it signed by him and he was like, This is amazing, blown away like, Aww. Was, and it was really it was a really good picture mm-hmm. to be fair, but he was also like this is basically. <laughs> so she was blown away by that. She had a great Aww. Time that. um, That's uh, pretty yeah. cool. All in all, great day. And then when we got home from the convention, got to the campsite, uh, we had to deal with the super bus that was, that was literally down <laughs> the super bus in mud. Um, but that was a good evening, great fun, good fun for the convention. <laughs> right. yeah. And if they do fax again in the future, I would be very willing to turn up again. And mm-hmm. Either have a, have a stall this time or, 
or just go with your customer. Have a good time. Mm-hmm. I think I've got anything else to add. Alright. I am going to wrap this up then and uh, upload it soon. Mm -hmm. so, yes, one day. Uh, no more than a week usually. <laughs> so I guess thank you all for watching. Mm -hmm. And if you actually, if people are watching this and have been to conventions or uh, working at conventions and all this and that, and you've stumbled on this video somehow, maybe there's the worst convention. <laughs> I don't know. Um, leave your tips. And yep. tricks and let us know if we've got anything wrong. Like we this was just a uh optical assessment. <laughs> like, you know, like a glancing around, but maybe there's some stuff behind the scenes that we don't know about. That you do know about that you can share in the comments below. So let us know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Interacting. Yeah man. We can add your points to our notes. So yeah. And and, and also if this has helped anyone. That's cool too. If anybody is setting up to go to conventions, I mm -hmm. this 